Right, Dan. I was telling you about this book by John McMenamin uh, called Poems for Paupers, Peasants, Perverts and Psychopaths. I've been asked to read another poem uh, from it. And somebody said, uh, I used to read one called The Naked Man. And indeed, they wanted to know if this was in it. Yes, it is indeed in it. Um, it brings me back to a time, apparently, uh, on this programme, a man rang here and said that he had spotted a man walking around Belfast naked. Do you remember that, Mr. Coyle? I do indeed. That's not that long ago. It's not it that long ago. Summer. What a wonderful time that was. Yes, was we were summer. so happy then. Summer. You know, we were carefree and gay. Uh -huh. Well, maybe, you know, yeah, yeah, carefree. Yeah, yes. And, yes. Uh, well, remember we greeted that with some surprise, because, after all, Belfast is not the type of person you expect to see a man walking would, around would, naked. No, Belfast is not the sort of person you would see walking around naked. No, whatever what that did meant. I say? Uh, Belfast is Belfast not, the, not the, sort of the sort of place you'd see a man no. walking no, around naked. No, would you please clear up something? Yes. About Henry McCullough. Yes. Will you tell the people that Henry is alive and well? Henry is alive and well. Why is there rumours of his demise? You, you started them. When did I? Did I say he was dead? Yes. When? About four minutes ago. What did I say? You said that was the late Henry McCullough. Oh, did I? Yes. <laughs> did I really? People are ringing here asking about poor Henry. Well, I meant to say the great Henry no, McCullough. No, I said late. Yes. Well, what about the late great Henry no, McCullough? No, it's no good. Henry is alive. Was he on the phone there? No, but he's, how could he? He's, he's dead. He's dead, yeah. How yeah. could he phone? Yes. No, he's not dead. Henry is alive and well. Yes. He's not dead. Uh, so, <laughs> apologies to Henry. And I, his sorry, family. Henry, you know. Yeah. you know, just Turn me off, things. please. I will, of course. One day in Belfast City, to bring some culture to the town, an unknown man took off his clothes and started to walk around. He sauntered around the city streets. He didn't seem to care. He hadn't on a stitch of clothes. He was naked. He was bare. As naked as a jaybird, the people, they were shocked to see bits of him jiggle as down the road he walked. Old Maggie peered after him as she strolled by her place. I know that man, old Maggie cried. I recognize his face. And now he's at the junction. He sees the bright green light, see him flash his indicator, and then turn to the right. Women blushed and giggled as the naked one strolled by. They glanced at him with eyes downcast. They wouldn't look him in the eye. When men met the naked man, one thought flew through their minds. Nature had been good to him. Yes, nature had been kind. The unknown nude went strolling on, on his merry naked way, with the autumn sun glinting off his cheeks on that lovely harvest day. Then the politicians, they all vie to come up with a plan to attach their flag or emblem to the walking naked man. You see, this is, you know... The DUP met him head on to attach a Union Jack, while Sinn Féin, with a tricolour, approached him from the back. The unknown nude fought them off, then quickened up his pace. I know that man! Old Maggie cried. I recognise his face! He passes by the City Hall, and the Lord Mayor's legs go weak. How dare he walk about like that, my God, the barefaced cheek? The MLAs, remember them? are up in arms, and the DUP inquire, was he armed with a weapon? Did he breach the old ceasefire? Next thing you know, he'll be on a ferry to Cairn Ryan. Trimble tries to blame Sinn Féin. He said they have a plan to terrorise the city with a walking naked man. Sinn Féin blame the Unionists, and a rumour flies around that the Orange Order have stripped off to march in Portadown. Someone then calls Tony Blair. Tony, take it to the Queen. And the monarch says, this naked man, was he orange or was he green? It's very good. It's not bad. Listen. She's not as loud as that. Before before you continue... This naked man, is he orange or he green? Before you continue with the poem, yes. when you finish, we've got information about that book waiting for you on, t on Telephone One. Pretty hard to say Telephone One, That's isn't it? Aye. OK. The United Nations are up all night. The whole world stands aghast as they talk about the naked man walking around Belfast. George Bush doesn't like it and says, that guy's a bad un. That walking nude in Belfast, could that be Ben Laden? The Vatican are puzzled, then the Pope decides to speak. If you meet the nude in Belfast, to turn your other cheek. But... <laughs> it was a bad George Bush. It was a great Pope. It was a good Pope. It was a good Queen. I give good Pope. <laughs> you do give you do a good Pope and but, a good Queen. But now the... <laughs> Where can I go from here? I don't know. The only way to go is down. Right. Sorry. Just, this is very good, by the way. Do you know what I feel like doing? Yeah. I feel like doing a Vincent Price. Remember Vincent Price? Vincent Price? Yeah, you you speak like that. We'll finish it. No, that was Peter Larry. Anyway, that's old. We can't do old impersonations. What, why don't you do more impersonations? I'm tired. It's, a, it's since your eye went bad. Uh -huh. We have been receiving a number of messages from the people outside who have noticed that you have not done any more impersonations, you know, even though you said you would. I'm tired. Will you do some on Monday? Say what you say. 
I can see I can't I can't see anything. What about the M square? I can't go, I can't go through the M square anymore. Can't go through the M square. I can't go through the M square. Mm, it's good, but it's not right. <laughs> But now, do I have Get to do the, to the poem. Do I have to do the impersonation? I have to do this the impersonation. Very good. Right? Go on, go on. I'll do James Galway. Right. I was in Burn the other day playing my flute. <laughs> I said, uh, Roger. <laughs> what about? I was just saying that Jimmy Ellis, he called over to Lake Titty Cacker. Anyway, but now the police have cornered him and they show they're no fools. I can't do impersonations. I can't. Oh. I start to laugh. But now the police have cornered him, and they know they're no fools, by using a helmet strategically placed to obscure the old crown jewels. So, just who was the naked man? Was he tag or prod? Well, ask the one who made him naked. That one, that man was God. Old Maggie couldn't sleep that night. And her old mind it did race. I'm sure I know that man, she moaned. I recognise his face. Hello, good morning.